Oh, man. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, mercy, mercy. <laughs> wow, can you say amen this morning? Amen. amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Yeah. When you get in a tight spot, he always steps in. And when you think time is running out, God comes in and says to you, I'm the eternal one. Time doesn't matter to me. It's all right. It's all right. Praise God. God is already in this place this morning. Can you feel his presence this morning? Amen. Wow, what a good-looking group you are. Man, I tell you, we're going to have to get out some more chairs before long. <laughs> We've got almost every seat filled this morning. That, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Exodus, chapter 3, in the first verse. While you're locating that passage of Scripture in Exodus, chapter 3, uh, I'm going to share a teaching from God's Word also in this same chapter. It occurs toward the last of this third chapter. And the question is concerning God, what is His name? Do you really know what the name of God is? The Bible will unfold for us tonight a miraculous and supernatural and marvelous truth of the name of God. You do not want to miss this teaching tonight. Not because of your pastors doing it, but because of what God the Holy Spirit has already revealed to my heart and what I want your heart to have revealed to it as well. Let's, let's share this verse together. What a, what a beautiful verse it is. Moses has been born back in the second chapter. God has preserved his birth uh, miraculously and supernaturally. And uh, his mother gave birth to him. And uh, she had to hide him because there was a decree in the land. All male children under the age of two would be slaughtered. And so uh, the mother of Moses said, take the baby and put him in a basket of bulrushes and put him in the water and someone will find him. Interestingly enough, and miraculously, the supernatural power of God stepped in upon the scene when when the mother of Moses thought all was gone and uh, one of Pharaoh's maidens was bathing in the river and she came to uh, Pharaoh's chief daughter and said to her, "Uh, there's a little basket flowing in the river and she said, go get it. And she went and got it and, and she said, there's a baby here. And she said, find a nurse and let her nurse him and raise him up. And so he was raised up in the palace of Pharaoh. Now, Moses is a mature man when we come to this third chapter, verse 1. Now, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. From Egypt to the backside of the desert, from the palace to the sheepfold. What a strange change for a man who would be destined to lead God's people, Israel, out of 430 years of Egyptian bondage. What what a strange way to prepare one for such an awesome, awesome position and power that Moses would be endued by, by God the Father in heaven. What a... What a strange way that God works in. Now listen, I want to say something to you this morning. Don't discount God in any situation in your life. Don't don't cut him out. Daniel has already reminded us so beautifully that God says, you just do what you can do. I'll take care of the miracles. Amen. I'm so glad he's in charge of the miracles and not me and not you. And so God is a God of miracles. And... uh, God can work in any circumstance, any situation in your life, no matter how severe it is. No matter how dismal it may seem to you right now. And I'm speaking to someone here this morning, maybe many someones, who are having a dismal experience in their life. Who are facing something that is absolutely to you insurmountable. And you're asking yourself the question, how am I going to get over this and through this? How am I going to get through it? Notice this strange preparation for a man who would be the, quote, leader 
of Israel. And one day God would say of him something he even never said of another man in all of history. There's never been another like Moses as the prophet of God in all the land. Never. What a strange place for an individual who's going to be commended by God like that to find himself on the backside of the desert away from anyone and everyone just a flock of sheep. What a strange environment. What, what is your desert this morning? Are you in the desert? Maybe, maybe some of you are on the backside of the desert as Moses was. It's bad to be in the desert, bad enough. But it's even worse to get on the backside of the desert. What is, what is God doing? What is God doing? Number one. Reality is present here. On the backside of the desert, that's where reality is. Whatever the backside of your desert is, I want to say to you this morning, God is saying to you through Moses, that is where reality is. So don't, don't give up at the very beginning of your backside of the desert. That's where reality is. There are no false colors there. No false colors. There are no pretensions there. You can't pretend when you're on the backside of the desert. It is what it is. I heard a car dealership say on TV here recently, and one of his advertisements is this, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. <laughs> In other words, you've got to make the best of what the situation is. There are no pretensions on the backside of the desert. Your life is valued, now get this, for what it really is. Not what you think it is, not what you hope others to think it is, but when you're in the backside of the desert in your life, and this is the situation with you, the value of your life is valued for what it really is. No pretensions. And fourthly, you will find yourself in the presence of God. I want to say to you this morning, you can't go anywhere God isn't. God's everywhere. God is even in the backside of your desert. And, and so when you get there, just, just remember this. You'll find yourself in the presence of God. Fifthly, you will have right thoughts about everything. Wow. <laughs> in the most difficult time of your life. You will find yourselves thinking in ways that you've never thought before. And when all is stripped away and it's just you and God. Now listen to this. It will be right. Your thoughts will be what they need to be when it's just you and God. And when you know that God is there on the backside of your desert with you. There's also no pride there. No pride. Uh, we had an unusual incident at our house this morning. I had three ladies with me in my home. You didn't know the preacher had those, did you? <laughs> my wife, my soon-to-be 100-year-old mother-in-law, and my precious granddaughter. And in the midst of us getting breakfast, cooking food for all of our children and grandchildren to come home today for lunch, the transformer blew. Now I tell you, it's a bad day when a transformer goes and a woman's trying to curl her hair. <laughs> if you want reality, you'll get reality. I told the deacons this morning when I got in late, I said, I'm here, but late. I said, oh, the power went off, but praise God, God's power's not off. <laughs> You've got to look at it that way. You've got to look at it that way. Listen, when you're on the backside of the desert in your life experience, there's no pride whatsoever. You're not interested in pride. You're not interested in how you look and how others think you look. You're interested in finding out what God wants to say to you in the backside of your desert life experience. And lastly, it's just you and God. It's just you and God. 
want to say something to us this morning because God said it to me this week. When you get to the place, Henry, when it's just you and God, then I'll begin to do some things in your life miraculously. When you begin to realize it's just you and God, nobody else, nobody else. Secondly, the backside of the desert in your life, desert experience, is the place where God shows himself. Look at verse 2 of our text of Scripture. We didn't read it, but uh, it, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing verse. Uh, and the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. And he, so he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Uh, what is he saying? Well, look down in verse 4, in the, the first part of verse 4. Uh, God was in the burning bush. Isn't that interesting? I'm going to say to you this morning that that's saying to you and me that uh, man cannot produce such wonder as that. Now think with me just clearly for a moment. Think seriously with me for just a moment. Moses is tending his flock of sheep. And he turns and he looks. And to the side there is a bush and it is literally consumed in flames. But it is not being consumed. He sees all the leaves on the bush. And if it's a fruit bearing bush, he sees all the fruit. It's being burnt, but it's not being consumed. Man cannot produce such wonder as that. What God does, and I want you to write this down. What God does is ablaze with his glory which can never be put out. What God does in your life is ablaze with his glory and it can never put out, be put out. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14, it's not on the screen, but I want to ask you to jot it down anyway. Describing Jesus in the day when he comes back for his church and in the day when he comes uh, not for salvation, but for the judgment of this earth. The Bible says, it pictures him and says his eyes, his eyes were like a flame of fire. His eyes, the eyes of Jesus, the day when he comes back riding on a great horse, his eyes are like a flame of fire. Verse 3 of our text this morning. The Bible says Moses turned to look. The lesson is very simple. Write this down. If you will turn aside from your circumstance, you will see something. If you will turn aside, you will see. God will not reveal himself unless you turn. Unless you turn. Don't let your circumstances consume you. When it seems like it's impossible, whatever the backside of the desert of your life experience is, if you will turn, if you will turn, you will see. And God will not reveal himself until you and I turn. That's the bottom line. Secondly, God will not reveal himself to you unless you look. How many of you, if you were to go home this afternoon and after your lunch you were to walk out on your porch and take a few steps into your yard and you saw a bush burning would you look? Sure. Sure. God won't reveal himself until you look. Until you look in his direction. Not in the direction of the desert experience of your life. Mo I suggest something to you. Moses could have been a very bitter man. Why should I tend flock of sheep? And get this, it was even the sheep of his father-in-law. It wasn't his own sheep. God, well, what, what are you putting me to this task for? But Moses was not concerned about that. Praise God. He was concerned about looking in the direction of God. For God was in the burning bush. And thirdly, God won't reveal himself to you unless you desire to know. Moses wanted to know. Do you want to know today? Do you want to know what God says to you where you're at, where you're hurting, where the deepest pain of your life and your body is raging? Do you want to know what God has to say? If you desire to know, you will know. 
you 